viewers all around the world thank you for your prayers and your support thank you for praying and fasting for the whole world and thank you for also praying and fasting for the nation nigeria for peace to return to the land may god almighty in his infinite mercy bless your soul spirit and body and supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in jesus christ's name we want to give thanks to god for providing the strength to all his children all around the world we want to give thanks to him for his faithfulness for his goodness and for his kindness and we want to also observe a few minutes silence for those who have lost their lives all around the world because of what they believe in christ we want to observe a few minutes silence for those also who have been fighting for justice and in the course of this fight they have lost their lives let us ask for god's mercy and favor to speak for the family speak for the nations and speak for everyone once again let us ask for the mercy of god to speak for the families for the nations and also for everyone you and for me father we thank you you are good and your mercies endure forever thank you lord for your goodness thank you lord for your mercy thank you for your forgiving spirit thank you for your spirit of comfort thank you for giving to the families that have lost their loved ones their hearts to endure this grief and pain in jesus christ's name amen today we shall be looking at the beginning of creation god the father son and the holy spirit said let us make man in our own image and after our likeness these statements were statements of god expressing his goodness to everyone to humanity to man he has made in his own image and after his likeness there was no life in man until god himself breathed on man and at that point man became a living soul this shows that life itself is a product of god's goodness the life man received was a product of god's goodness god's goodness in our lives is not expected to be kept but to be shared because god himself shared out of his goodness his very life his very image and his very likeness and that is what everyone is enjoying today turn with me as you read the book of romans chapter 12. let us read together I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god for i say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as god has dealt to each one a measure of faith for as we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function so we be many are one body in christ and individually members of one another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them in prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry let us use it in our ministering he who teaches in teaching he who exhorts in exhortation he who gives with liberality he who leads with diligence did you hear that we are speaking to everyone including leaders i take it again verse 8 he who exhorts 
in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who sows mercy with cheerfulness. Verse 9 is spiritual advice. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Are you listening, everyone, whether you're a youth or a follower, whether you're a leader, you're a poor, a rich person? Verse 9, this is a spiritual advice. Verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence. Take note of verse 11. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Did you hear that? Do not be wise in your own opinion. Verse 17, this is actually our proof text. Verse 17 of Romans chapter 12. Once again, Romans chapter 12 from verses 17 down to 21. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wealth. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay says the Lord. Verse 20. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21. The main point. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Life is a product of God's goodness. Learn to overcome evil with good. Did you hear that? Life that you are living, the life you have now is a product of God's goodness. The life came from God, not from Satan, not from me, not from you, not from anyone. Life is a product of God's goodness. If there is anything that is not according to the design God has in mind, we must make sure we allow our life, which is a product of God's goodness, to overcome evil with good. You are not created to overcome evil with evil. God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. Out of his goodness, he gave man life. He created man to be like him. One of the greatest qualities God has is his goodness. He is always good. His goodness is not seasonal. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. No matter how you've been pushed to the wall, by Satan and his evil agents to exhibit another attribute that comes from him, which is evil. You are commanded as a child of God, whose life comes from God, to overcome evil with good. You are created to be a channel of goodness where there is evil deeds. You are created to be a channel of humility where there is pride. You are created to be a channel of forgiveness where there is sin. God himself expressed his forgiveness to mankind who went ahead to sin against him after he 
put them in the garden of Eden by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent forth Jesus Christ to be a channel of God's forgiveness where there is sin, to be a channel of God's goodness where there is evil. He sent forth his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to overcome all evils with good. And Jesus did. If you are created in God's own image and after his likeness, you are commanded to be a channel of goodness where there is evil. You are commanded to overcome evil with good. Remember that there are evils everywhere. Evils in people's thoughts, evils in people's words, and evils in people's deeds. If you look at your left, what you see is evil. If you look at your right, what you see is evil. If you look at your back, what you see is evil. If you look at your front, what you will see is nothing but evil. In the list of evil generation, you are commanded as a child of God to overcome evil with good. What is going through your heart? What is going through your mind? What kind of word are you speaking? And what kind of character do you possess? Jesus Christ overcame evil with good. He came to show mercy where there were sins. If Jesus Christ had decided to pay evil for evil, none of us would have lived to see this day today. Jesus looked up and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. In this statement, Jesus Christ practically overcame evil with good. People came to arrest him for the offense he did not commit. They accused him for what he did not do. One of his servants misunderstood Jesus Christ's mission, used a weapon of evil to cut off one of the ears of the people that came to arrest Jesus Christ. Jesus told Peter, take your knife and put it back to the silk, for everyone that kills by sword will die by sword. He was telling Peter, don't worry, for I have never seen where evil overcomes good. I am not here to overcome evil with evil. I have come to overcome evil with good. What about you? It is not all about what is happening presently. It is also all about how you handle what is happening presently. Your reaction, your action, your words, your thoughts and deeds can also create the future you desire or the future you fear. Everything you are seeing today that is made available, that is helping human beings to live for God, has been created by God. It did not come from anyone. When I say anyone, I mean everyone on earth. They all came from God. We are not created to destroy God's work. We are not created to destroy God's products. We are not created to destroy human beings. God created everything, but you and I are the greatest product of the Holy Spirit. Remember, God is spirit. No one is given the right to destroy another person's life. Those who tried it in the past paid for it dearly. No one is commissioned by God to destroy another person's life. No one is commissioned by God to overcome evil with evil. Everyone will stand before God on the last day to give account of everything spoken or done while in this body. What account will you give to Jesus Christ? What account will you give to God on the last day? You with God are the majority. You with God are not alone. 
If you are three years without God, what a lonely life that is. If you are in any association without God, what an association of loneliness that is. You with God are the majority. God never created anyone, whether young or old, to kill, to steal, or to destroy. Whether you are a leader or a follower. God has never created anyone to kill, to steal, or to destroy. The spirit God has given to his children comes to give life and life in abundance. What role are you playing in the world you have found yourself in today? What are you doing to promote peace in the society of which you are called to be a part? Jesus Christ is a symbol of peace. He encountered his disciples, and the first statement that came from him was, Peace be unto you. If you are a child of God, if you are a believing Christian, your life comes from Christ himself. Your actions are meant to promote peace where there is war. Your thoughts are designed to promote peace where there is violence. Your deeds are designed to bring back the lost peace in the society. No one is too young to be a channel of peace where there is war or violence. No one is too old to be a channel of peace where there is war or violence. And no one is too poor or too rich to be a channel of peace where there is war or violence. Whichever party you belong to, Whichever tribe you come from, whatever is your age limit, you are expected to be a channel of peace where there is violence. Development cannot come to stay, to remain in a land that is full of violence. Development cannot be in a place where there is bloodshed, violence, intolerance, tribalism, ethnicism, and the like. You are created in the image and likeness of God. You are not created in the image and likeness of Satan who comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Check yourself. Do you not know yourself again? Check your thoughts. Are you not seeing what is going through your heart and mind? Check your words. Are you not seeing what you have been telling people? Communicating to people. You can just hold phone and say anything. Check your deeds. Are you not seeing how you live your life? You are created to live in Christ. You are created to live in God. God and his words are one. His word never promotes violence nor bloodshed. His word brings peace. Where there is confusion, disunity, envy, greed, jealousy, corruption, injustice and the rest don't forget that our last day here on earth can be so unexpected your last day here on earth can be so unexpected where will you spend your eternity where will i spend my eternity there is life after life there is a place to be after you leave this world where will you spend your eternity everyone will appear before the judgment seat of christ that each one of us will give an account of the deeds done while we are in this body it is better to be a channel of peace than to be a channel of violence satan has come with all his deceitful acts and spirits and have entered Godly souls to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You have the power to resist him. The Bible calls you, calls me, and calls both believers and followers, calls everyone to submit to God. And then resist the devil. And he, I mean Satan, the devil, will flee from us. Will flee from you. Will flee from everyone. James chapter 4 verse 7. You are saved because of your neighbor. You are not saved because of your neighbor. 
You are panicking because of your neighbor. You are not panicking because of your neighbor. Your neighbor is safe because of you. Your neighbor is not safe because of you. Your neighbor is panicking because of you. Your neighbor is full of fear because of you. Your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. Your neighbor can be very, very secure and prosperous because of you. What is your role? What you make happen for your neighbor, God himself will make happen for you. We are not given the spirit of bondage to fear again, but the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, your security is only given by God, is only in the hands of God. Nebuchadnezzar came with threats against God's children. We all knew what happened. King Darius came with his threats against the children of God. They stood their ground, crucified fear of the name. We all knew what happened. The jailers and all the people came against Paul and Silas, lied against them, bound them hands and legs, threw them in the innermost part of the prison. We all knew what happened. Your neighbor is turned down economically because of you. Your neighbor's destiny is crying for help because of you. Your neighbor's future is crying for assistance because of you. Many are without food because of you. Your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. Many are unemployed because of you, your actions, your thoughts, and your words. You are created to be a channel of blessing where there is poverty or hardship. What are you doing? Who are you waiting for? You are created to share what you have and not to hoard what you have. God had his own image and likeness. He decided out of his goodness to create man. Man's life became a product of God's goodness. Your neighbor is jobless because of you. People cried to God and God listened to their cry. The people of Nineveh, after sinning against God, cried to God. God, out of his goodness and mercy, listened to their cry. How many people's cries have you listened to? and attended to today. Who created you to close your heart against people's cry in the society? Jonah, who preached the message to the people of Nineveh, tried to tell them, no, these people, I can't go because they have sinned. God said, no, go. He was first to deliver the message. Repentance came and that attracted the mercy of God. God had mercy on the wicked nation, saved them and restored them and also delivered Jonah. You are not created not to respond to all human needs. You are created to be a channel to share the blessings you have received from God with others. Resources of your nations came from God. Resources we have seen in the world today came from God out of his goodness. God decided to bless all the nations with different resources. The resources of your nation came from God. The strength you have as a youth came from God. The wisdom you have as a leader came from God. The power you have as a minister or servant of God came from God. God's goodness in your life is not expected to be kept by you, but to be shared with everyone. If you are in a position to share these resources, why are you hoarding it? You are not created to hold God's goodness to yourself and family alone. You are created to share them with others. You are not created to use violence to receive from people God has sent to you. You are created to overcome evil with 
good. May there be peace where there is violence. If nations can come together to negotiate dialogue and reason together in the light of God's word, there will be peace on earth. There will be peace in all nations. There will be peace in the heart of everyone. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace and he has decided to come down with his grace and mercy. No matter the sins you must have committed in the past, no matter your attitudes in the past, you can still be forgiven and given another chance to overcome evil with good. Your records of evil in the past have been cancelled by God. The sins you have committed in the past that Satan has been using to cause confusion in your life, to cause confusion in your nation, have been totally forgiven by Jesus Christ himself. What a glorious new beginning. I bring this message to an end. Remember today's message is titled, Life is a Product of God's Goodness. The life of your nation is a product of God's goodness. The life of your economy, politics of your nation, the life of your tribe, your race or gender, is a product of God's goodness. God himself gave out everything that is good in the world today. Are you talking about your resources? Are you talking about intelligence? Good administration? Are you talking about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Are you talking about mineral resources in various nations? Yours inclusive. God himself, out of his goodness, made all these things available. God created you, created me, and everyone in his own image and likeness out of his goodness. His goodness in us is not expected to be kept, but to be shared. Did you hear that? God's goodness in us is not expected to be holded, to be kept to ourselves, but to be shared. I repeat to you as you are listening. God's goodness in your life is not meant to be kept by you but to be shared share them with others don't begin to segregate this man is from my tribe this man is young this man is old this man is this this is my colleague this. no share them with your neighbors your neighbors could be your friends your parents your brothers your sisters your siblings your neighbors could be people from the same tribe with you same village local government community People from the same state or region or district. People from the same country or continent. Your neighbor could be someone who do not belong to the religion you belong to. Your neighbor could be somebody who hates you, who does not want to see your progress. Jesus Christ himself says, share God's goodness in your life with everyone. Right now, I believe that this message has brought you to a place of reconciliation, a place of peace, a place of joy, a place of goodness, a place of forgiveness, a place of mercy, a place of sound wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I believe that this message has taken you to the realm of love. Begin to promote peace, whether it's violence or war, joy, whether it's misery or sadness, hope, whether it's misery. Kindness, where there is greed. Tolerance, where there is intolerance. Patience, where there is impatience. Self-control, where there is anger. Faithfulness, where there is unfaithfulness. Let this message help you to be reconciled back to the living God Almighty through his word and by his spirit. I can see your character changing. I can see a new approach God has given to you, guiding you to think, to talk, and to act according to the word and the spirit of God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Right now, I stretch my hand and I command peace to come upon every nation, everyone, every soul, everybody. Receive the peace of God into your heart. You cannot say no. I command your heart to receive the peace of God. 
I command your soul, spirit, and body to receive the peace of God. I command your marriage, your career, your finances, your health, your family. I command your village, your community, your district, your local government, your region, your tribe, your language, your nation, your continent, and this generation and generations yet unborn to receive the peace of God, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Shalom.